Hi, it's Jeff here. Before we start our latest Six Nations pod, just a quick word to remind you of the Harpen Guinness Pint Predictor League. Even though the Six Nations has kicked off with three exciting matches over the weekend, you can still win yourself some free pints by first downloading the free Fanzo app, then joining our league. Just enter the code HARPEN, that's H-A-R-P-I-N, and keep forecasting the scores of the remaining games of the tournament. Right, now it's time to start Harpen on Rugby. But anyway, at this point, Rich, I thought we might have a chat about the overall performance of Mr. Hugo Keenan, because um, there were a lot of fine displays from Ireland, but since the Welsh were always going to resort to the high ball, we needed him to be Mr. Dependable, and he didn't let us down. He had probably one of the best performances in a green shirt that I've seen him have in a very long time. He was just imperious, and uh, you know, and that, and that is a word or a... Or, or a um, uh, an adjective we used to use. Remember when we used to think about who on earth is and, and the worries and concerns. Who on earth is going to take over from Rob Carney? Oh my God! This guy is just. I, I, I'm sure he's got a magnet. He attracts that bloody ball whenever it's flying. But it's not just that. And you know, Kino just described the intercept try by James Lowe. And I, you know, I, I'm not saying I, I'm the one who, who saw this because I didn't, because you can't see it on television. But they described it on the uh, on the analysis after that try. And it was because Hugo Keenan uh, moved and allowed and spoke to James Lowe that enabled James Lowe to push up to go for that intercept. Because James Lowe knew that J- Hugo Keenan was behind him. So <clears throat> that is the vision. It, I mean, this is like seeing about five moves ahead in chess. Hugo Keenan, who was about somewhere in the midfield, once once they they tell you what he's done, you you see it, drifts across, sees that the play is heading in that direction, goes onto the left wing, speaks to uh, James Lowe. James Lowe moves forward. This this is no coincidence. This isn't luck. This is pre-planned. And and you know and uh, James Lowe is good enough to to time it perfectly, uh, snatch the ball and go away. So it's not just about the uh, which which is the the fancy stuff I suppose that you see on telly most, which which is the catching of the ball in the air. That that is just part of that. It is no coincidence that he's there to catch that thing. He's there to catch that thing because he reads exactly where that thing is going to go. Um, he's also unbelievably quick at covering the many acres of pasture land that he has to cover uh, in that back three. Um, You know, the guy's just, he is a huge asset, an absolutely undeniable huge asset. Is he one of the top fullbacks in the world at the moment? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, You know, the others may be, and the best thing about it is he's no flash. He's just a workhorse, a workhorse, but he's just like a purring bloody Ferrari, isn't he? He really is good. What a what a great player. Other than that, he's rubbish. <laughs> Apart from that, <laughs> Kino, you might have a few a few a few a few details on it yourself. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he is like Rob Kearney in his pomp. He's the safe pair of hands, but also you know. The, the the flash of danger is there as well, you know. I mean, I I kind of I went through the I went through his involvements in the game just to kind of break out for me what I saw the bits the bits that I had that the, the attributes that he has that they highlighted for me, you know, the build up that second try. Uh, he had he made a sliding half break to highlight his attacking threat, uh, just on the outside, nearly nearly got away himself. Uh, but you know that. That, that that the fact that he's a threat carries throughout the game. Then whenever he, he whenever he has the ball in his hands, uh, ten minutes in, um, Sexton made that crossfield kick. Liam Williams had it well covered, and Keenan knows he's not going to make the the catch, so he absolutely drills Liam Williams about three feet into the ground. Uh, you know, <laughs> uh, which. We all love to see, frankly. <laughs> That's Liam Williams on the receiving end. Uh, Eleven minutes in, just a minute later. Dyer breaks and notices that ball twice forwards towards the line. Comes in from the far side, diagonally running back and manages to 
cover that ball, brings it back over the line because it was necessary at that point uh, to do so. You know, we gave away uh, a five meter scrum off the back of that, but we handled that then as well. But the positioning, the pace, and so composed to get back and cover it without panicking. Um, 15 minutes in, he comes in at full pace, takes a Welsh box, kick clean out of the air. 29 minutes in, he goes up over Liam Williams, does the same thing again. 42 minutes in, intercept catch, no one in the backfield, but it's under Welsh advantage. So yeah, I'd say that's the end of that. But like, uh, if that advantage hadn't been coming, that's try time. I know it's neither here nor there, but you know, he has the, uh, he has the skills and the ability and the foresight to be in the right position to be able to do these things uh, in broken play. Uh, 55 minutes in, picks one up off his laces in the 22 and still beats three men jinking back in field to where the support is. So composed footwork, you know, uh, nothing, nothing seems to flap him at all. He's just, you know, freezing through all this calm as you like. Um, 61 minutes in, uh, he, he held his nerve um, on letting that probing kick from Joe Hawkins cross the line before dotting it down, despite the fact that he's got, I think, two Welshmen herring down on him. Just the, the, cool as a cucumber. Absolutely. Mm, yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's really hard to overstate what a good performance he had. Um, it, but it was understated in its own way. Uh, mm. If you didn't go looking for it, to the casual fan, they might wonder, why did they give him man of the match? Yep. He did nothing. Mm. Yep. Yeah. He didn't even score any tries. Yep. Maybe yeah, it's like it's like sometimes in the Oscars when they give the Oscar to someone who who just getting it because not, maybe this movie wasn't the best of all time, but all their others, their combined work, get it because you don't you don't you don't you don't you, like you say you don't even know he's there because he's Mister Dependable doing what he needs to mm. do. But in terms of in terms of those catches, if if either of the three of us made one catch like that, we'd be we'd be standing there like, oh my god, I caught it. <laughs> He's not happy with that. He knows what to do. Like you say, he goes on and beats three men then. It's almost like he's got that Terminator vision that the, the, the screen pops up in front of him, analyzing, analyzing two forwards over to the left, run towards them. And uh, it's a, he, he always knows exactly what, what to do um, in, w- with the situation with the ball. And you can just, you just rely on him. And the, the, it was almost, and in terms of Ireland and Leinster's squad point of view, it was like a seamless transition. Like, uh, like Rich said, we had Rob Carney and who the hell's going to replace him. We're going to have to bring someone up. And he just slotted right in there. And mm. from the start, put in the performances coming from the seven team as he did straight into the 15s at, at that level and playing at that, at that level of uh, the game. It's just been, it's, it's just been phenomenal. And uh, it's great that we, and if we, if we don't force ourselves to talk about him on a pod like this, you almost could go, all, all his career mm. without talking about him because you just mm. assume you're going to get a good response for a good good performance from him and um, you just can't take it for granted and he's just he's just done so well you know yep best best Irish men's convert from sevens to fifteens mm. easy I think so I think so it, it's a hard to argue against no yeah. absolutely absolutely 